YouTube. It's JP Dumpty, your BMW genius from West German BMW. In today's video, I'm going to go over a question that we've been getting recently about our PFs and basically how to use the different drive modes and e-drive modes uh, that come with the car. Now the two are, they do different things, but they also work in tandem. So I'm going to go over the differences between them. With that, let's get started down here. All right, so getting started. First thing you have right here, these are all of your drive modes. This is where you get your Sport, Comfort, and Eco Pro. That changes everything from your uh, heads-up display here or your little dash display to uh, everything from your steering effort, throttle response, and if you have something like adaptive suspension, it'll change your adaptive suspension as well as shift patterns for our uh, shift programming um, in the cars that are equipped with you know, gas-only engines. Going through them, obviously sport mode starts up the engine. That's gonna give you the most possible power. Why? Because the it, you're asking for the most power. So it's gonna give you the most from the uh, gas powered engine as well as your electric. That's gonna give you every possible thing, give you the most possible power, sharpest throttle response, heaviest steering to try and give you the most direct feel on the road. As you move down to comfort, you're gonna see it goes back to, come on, my father comfort mode. As you go down to comfort mode, you'll see it goes back into its normal just comfort settings. It's kind of like the middle ground. It's balanced between everything that you have and uh, trying to give you the balance between sporty and, you know, eco-minded driving. Then you have your eco pro mode. Pressing that changes everything on here to give you the most fuel efficient settings. It doesn't want to change anything up in here, uh, but that'll also give you a more th linear throttle response. It gives you kind of more assisted steering to make it even lighter, easier to drive. It changes uh, some of the uh, accessories that run off the engine. It's going to make those run a little bit less, so therefore there's less drag on the engine. Although in this one, most of them are electronic anyway, so it's going to basically lower the amount of pull and electricity needed to run those things. That's everything from your fan speed. Um, your AC is not going to run as cold. Your heat's not going to run as hot. Your fan's not going to run as fast. Little things like that just to lower all the things that are coming in. In contrast, E-Drive, when you press that button, this is where you get the different modes up here. Now, an auto E-Drive, that's going to give you kind of the uh, normal hybrid drive, combining your gas and your electric as you drive. Uh, that's going to basically use your onboard navigation to see where you are. It's smart enough to notice that if you're if you have a trip plan, it's going to say, "Hey, as we're driving, this part is uphill. That's going to need a little more gas." Uh, it's also followed by a downhill. Afterward, we can use that to kind of regain a little bit of our electric drive and put a little more electricity back in with our regeneration. So that's sort of what the uh, what the auto drive is for, the auto e-drive. That just kind of mixes it up based on how you're driving, based on your navigation, based on where you are, to kind of get you the best possible fuel economy with combined gas and electric. Pressing it again, you'll get your max e-drive. That is solely electric e-drive. So if you have, the more power you have, based on that little guy right there, focus, down there, thank you. Based on how much power you have inside that, you'll also see your range, your electric range right down there in comparison to your combined range, which is over here. Uh, this one will always give you combined electric and gas. So that's this is the one that I should tell you until you're actually empty versus just your electric range. Anyway, back to uh, Maxi Drive. So Maxi Drive is always gonna be using that electric drive that is in the car uh, that's gonna be driving just off the battery, no gas, nothing. Uh, when you are in that and you have more speed, you know you're gonna, it's gonna take you all the way up to 75 miles per hour on the highway, but you're gonna get better efficiency for around town driving. Um, Cause basically the stop and go is where this part thrives. Press it again and you're gonna go down to something called battery control mode. Now battery control mode is when you don't have any charging around you uh, and you're already low on power. This would be a way that you can use the gas engine to recharge the battery just with your normal driving as well as any excess energy being used uh, by the car itself using the alternator. Just a bunch of various ways to kind of get more power back into the uh, battery itself. This is probably most efficient if you're doing highway driving where your gas engine is going to be more efficient for you than your electric. So if that's the case, 
I would suggest putting your car in battery control mode. Technically speaking, it already kind of goes into that when you're in auto e-drive and using the onboard navigation on the highway. But if you want to have manual control over it, putting it in battery control mode will get you the most possible charge back in your battery. And then uh, you can basically select exactly how much charge you want it to go to. I always suggest leaving it at 100%. Previous person had it at 80, so let's pop that up to 100%. Just because, you know, if you're if you're traveling and you want to take it out, it's like the example I use is, you know, people that tend to be in Philly, they like to go to the Jersey Shore or, um, you know, Ocean City, Maryland. That's mostly highway driving. That's a great time to recharge your battery. As you get off the highway, switch it back into Max E Drive. You're around town driving, you get the best out of your electric drive. So me personally, I'm a control nut. I like to be fully in control and I like to know exactly when my car is doing battery and when it's using gas only. So because of that, I tend to choose my own. For those who want more of a set it and forget it style, put it in auto e-drive and that's going to do the trick for you, giving you exactly what you want. Again, to get the most out of it, I do suggest using the onboard navigation so that way the car knows exactly where it is, where it's going and can plot out exactly when to charge, when to use electric, when to use gas, based on where you're going. Uh, so that's the most basic way to do this. Uh, something else I did want to point out with, this current one is a X330E. There are some differences with some of the other models. So for instance, the uh, bigger engines, as well as the 3 Series, they have um, not just your E-Drive, they have a couple other ones, and I'm going to do a quick little shot over to those so I can show you the difference. So now we're in the 3 Series, this is the 330E, and I'll show you this is where the uh, slight differences come, depending on which version you get, which model you get. This will be the deeper dive into the options and differences that you'll see here. So you'll see on this one, the battery save is now up here, but it works the exact same way, so when you press battery save, you still have the option for battery control exactly where you want it to be uh, how much charge you want to get in the battery based on that now the difference is on this one now your sport hybrid and electric are down here now it works slightly differently in this setup here so when you press sports the first thing you'll see is standard sport that just gives you gas powered engine the other one you get is extra boost that one that actually uses the electric power to boost and give you uh an e-boost uh from your electric power that you have in the car. So that's what that is. Let's go back to that. And then of course individual, where you can configure everything else inside of your sports, just like normal sports individual. The one we have below that is your hybrid button. Now hybrid has, as you see here, two different options. We have standard and eco pro. Basically the standard is the standard one that you have in the other cars where it sort of trying to give you the perfect balance between gas, electric, giving you the most it possibly can to kind of, you know, keep power high without losing much of your uh, range. Now when you press hybrid the second time, that pulls up Eco Pro mode hybrid. The difference for that one is that basically now in the uh, X330E, that one was you had to go into Eco Pro and Auto E Drive. That's basically the same as on this one. This one they differentiate it where now Eco Pro, now Hybrid Mode Eco Pro, gives you the absolute most um, hybrid version of uh, gives you the least possible gas, but the most possible electric, while still combining the two to get the best fuel economy as possible using both systems. And then of course electric standard full electric drive that's going to be uh whether you have uh, extra x drive or just s drive s drive being the just rear wheel drive or uh whichever model you have that's just going to be purely electric running the wheels uh and with that those are the main differences here that you'll get um obviously if you have this setup it's made to kind of integrate the electric engine into your sports driving a little bit more than in the x3 because being a 3 series this is made to be our sports sedan so therefore it kind of has a little more of a sporty edge to it to try and give it more of that you'll find either one of these two systems depending on whether you're in the x545e uh the 7 series so the 745e uh or the uh x5 i already mentioned x5 sorry brain or the uh, 530E. 
So those are the two versions that you'll get at this point. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out, leave a comment below. Um, also, don't be, don't forget to share this with our friends that have p -halves. You know, as more and more of these come out, there are gonna be a lot more questions to be answered. And that's why we're here to help you guys get the most out of your cars. Because, you know, at BMW, we not only want you to love the brand, we also want you to love the car because we want you to get the most out of it. You know, for the ultimate driving machine, there's a reason that we say that, that we don't just uh, put people out in their cars and just say, go have fun. You know, we want you to actually know there's a lot of technology in the cars, there's lots of things to learn, there's lots of things to kind of understand, and there are new, little nuances between each uh, vehicle that we sell. That's why I'm making this video, giving you the best possible chance to get to know your p -have from BMW, especially as we expand this more and more. And in the future, when we come out with full electric versions like the iX and the i4, obviously we have the i3 right now in either range extender or BEV, which is battery operated vehicle. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, like I said, leave them in the comment below. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. You know, the more people you get on this one, the better we can do, the better we can give you uh, in terms of content. Uh, also keep an eye out for the uh, M4 coming out later this uh, later next week, so that's going to be coming out on the uh, 11th, which is Thursday, March 11th, 2021. Uh, if you're watching this after this, if you're watching this video after that time, hey, check out our M4 live event uh, from that day. Anywho, thanks so much again for coming in, guys. We really appreciate we appreciate all the help you give us, all the support you give us, and we'll do everything we can in turn to help you. With that. Have a great day. Keep on motoring and driving that ultimate driving machine. Have a good one.